Hello and welcome to the Ending Body Burnout Show. We are your hosts, Chris and Philly, co-founders of a multi-award winning functional medicine practice, serving busy people with energy, mood and gut issues. While busyness, addictive doing, people pleasing and perfectionism might be the norm, it's not normal and it's a major contributor to health issues. Our goal with this show is to give you a holistic root, root cause approach to healing your body so that you don't have to continue doctor or diet hopping or popping a gazillion supplements hoping something might stick. So get ready to heal your body, get your spark back, deeply connect with yourself and step into the life of your dreams. Let's Let's dive dive in. in. Welcome, guys, to this episode of the Ending Body Burnout Show. We are excited to have you. Why don't we go ahead and introduce our topic for the week? Yeah, so we are talking all about toxins in your products and also your hormones and detoxing. And this actually comes from a chapter in my book called Low Tox Home. And just a quick little announcement before we dive into the episode. Next week, I'm going to be in Sydney for our book tour. I'm doing a live book launch event in Sydney in conversation with Lizzie Williamson. It's going to be awesome. Lots of fun. We're going to talk all about the steps to end your body burnout and find your spark. And I would love to have you there if you are in Sydney next week. So that's on Monday the 18th. I'll pop in the show notes a link there. It is completely free, but I do request that you RSVP your spot as spaces are limited. Okay, so let's dive into all things toxins. So when I did my four-year training at Kalish Institute of Functional Medicine, I remember Dr. Kalish always banged on about toxins. He said one of the major reasons that there are so many health issues today is because our world is more toxic than ever. And that was going back about 10 years. So have things changed? I know that people are a lot more savvy, but the world is still quite toxic. Now there's some stats around this. So humans emit more than 250 billion tons of chemical substances a year, which is huge. I wouldn't even know what that looks like in terms of if it was plonked into a lake. A lot. (laughs) A lake. I don't know, 250 billion tons. It's a booger load. It's just a lot, just a lot, people. And I'm sure if you are a health seeker, you will know by now that toxins really contribute to body burnout in some way. They disrupt our hormones. They're causing oxidative damage to our cells. They're linked to different health diseases like cancer, heart problems, fertility, allergies, mental health issues, and even things like weight gain and obesity because these toxins really disrupt our endocrine system. And we'll talk a bit more about those body systems soon. So where can these little hidden toxins uh, be hiding in your home? I'm going to talk about like specifically skincare cleaning products because there's so many different ways toxins show up in our world. But today, just for a bit more scope, Uh, We're just going to dig into skincare and cleaning products. And so they can show up in pretty much anything in your cabinet, (laughs) especially if you're buying them from supermarkets or chemists or just like your general department store. Most of the products in those types of stores are generally very toxic. So in my book, I've actually listed the top 20 toxins in skincare products Um, I'm not going to read them all, but I'll just, I'll throw out a few. So things like chlorine and bleach, very toxic. Sodium lauryl sulfate, fragrance, formaldehyde, ammonia, triclosan, phthalates, phenol, fluoride, microbeads, aluminum, I can't even say that, aluminum. Aluminum. (laughs) Aluminum. Did you spell it the American way or Australian way Al- in the book? Aluminium. No, I spelled it Australia way. Aluminium. 
Aluminium. That is so funny. I was just reading my book and I forgot how to say aluminium. I was trying to say it like an American. <clears throat> Parabens, BHEA. Okay, so heaps, heaps of stuff and that is just like a small handful, but they're probably the more toxic ones that you want to really be looking at in, um, in skincare products. Uh, if you're a client who's listening to this, we've done some extensive masterclasses inside our Ending Body Burnout program. Uh, so if you want to really deep dive into that, let us know and I'll send you the direct link because sometimes our masterclasses, you know, we have a lot of content in there. Okay. Let me chat about just a couple of those uh, toxins so you can understand how they actually affect the body. So mineral oil is an interesting one. Uh, this is found in something like Vaseline. Does everyone remember Vaseline? I'm pretty sure it's still out there, but I was so addicted to Vaseline. I was using it probably from like year six to maybe like my 30s so decades I was using Vaseline thinking it was so good and I remember the adverts of the shiny sleek woman just covered in Vaseline and I'm like yeah I want to be like her even when I was pregnant with my first baby had no idea how dangerous dangerous it was and I was trying to um, prevent uh, stretch marks so I would just like rub Vaseline oil all over my pregnant belly ah now, let's uh, a couple of years later, or maybe three years later, I started actually learning about these toxins and I found that paraben is actually really carcinogenic, which means that it can it is linked to cancer and it's actually been banned in the use of cosmetics in some countries. Australia, we can still use it. But when I started looking into that, uh, it can it's linked to things like allergies, impaired brain function, birth defects, birth defects. I've been rubbing it on my pregnant belly. Oh my gosh! So okay, so pretty nasty. Um, parabens is another really common. Uh, it's often used as a preservative in skincare cleaning products, and there's again lots of research around how it's linked to cancer. It affects puberty patterns and hormones, and there was a study that actually looked at uh, tumors, so breast cancer tumors, and they looked at twenty different samples, and they were trying to see is there a link of like similar things showing up in these tumors, and what they found was there was a high amount of parabens in breast cancer tumors so it can definitely impact your female hormones and cause all sorts of issues crazy very crazy <laughs> vaseline uh so i've never really ever used vaseline That's maybe good. to play practical jokes on on people like i'd um put vaseline on a basketball but va mineral oil isn't just it. Vaseline. It's in so many other products. Like anything that is kind of a balmy type thing generally has mineral oil in it. So you've probably had used like beard balms with mineral oil or, you know, those little stick lip balms. I never used lip balms, as you could probably tell. <laughs> fragrance is also a really sneaky one. So sometimes... Okay, I did use that. Sometimes, fragrance. Sometimes, and this is where you have to get quite savvy around learning what's inside your products because there can be... You can buy a product that looks like it's natural. They usually say it's green and organic and da 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 Now, did you know that people can check the label organic on a product? It doesn't have to be 100% organic. And sometimes there's little shortcuts that are made in different products where they use fragr fragrance as a cheap substitute for something... Uh, like your natural, really healthy essential oils. And fragrance, uh, there's no – that could have like hun hundreds of different ingredients inside that fragrance ingredient to make it – and then it's just put on the label as fragrance. And so we don't know what's inside fragrance. And a lot of those fragrances, 95% are actually derived from petroleum, which goes back to your mineral oil and uh, Vaseline. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, I mean, I could talk about those ingredients for ages, but I'll pop some resources down below if anyone wants to dig more into those. 
Okay, so how do these toxins affect the body systems? And I want to talk specifically about your hormones, mitochondria and neurotransmitters. So hormones get a really big hit when it comes to toxins in skincare products, cleaning products. Um, So adrenals, all about secreting your stress hormones, any toxic foreign substance that enters your body stresses out your system because your system is and in your specifically your immune system because your immune system is like oh that's not part of us oh that's that that doesn't feel right and so it will cause cortisol to rise as a stress response and then when those hormones rise they often suppress your sex hormones And so that's where women and also men can start developing hormonal imbalances in terms of uh, things like PMS, infertility, um, man boobs, fatigue, perimenopausal hot flushes. Erectile Erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction, yep. All of that. Why do you laugh about that? You could say that you could say the man boob stuff with no no laughing. I say you get you get wonky willies. <laughs> you go, it's funny. You're just like throwing in a few little words here. Erectile dysfunction. I'd love to. Yeah, my <laughs> my transcript. What what's Chris said today? Woody wonkiness. <laughs> okay. Now toxins are also known as xenoestrogens. So some toxins, there are a lot of toxic chemicals out there that mimic estrogen. And so when you put them on your skin or you're breathing them into your body or even eating them, these xenoestrogen toxins can actually confuse your body's own production of estrogen. And this often leads to what's called estrogen dominance, where your body's producing too much estrogen in comparison to, say, Um, your progesterone levels. This is more specifically for a female. Men can also develop estrogen dominance too and that might lead to man boobs or... (laughs) Erectile dysfunction? (laughs) Yes. Stop laughing. This is a serious issue. I know I shouldn't laugh because there may be some people listening to this with this this issue. This is not a judgment-free zone right now. (laughs) Okay. So estrogen dominance. Brothers, <laughs> I've got your back. Just, there's little steps that you can follow. It's, it's all good. There, Just follow the steps. There are little steps. Okay. So toxins. Okay. So you can start developing estrogen dominance. Now, estrogen dominance is also really common when there's liver or detox issues. And guess what? A thing that puts a lot of pressure and stress on the liver (laughs) Chris is just looking at me (laughs) trying to make me laugh I'm not (laughs) (laughs) okay so did it work so toxins chemicals foreign substances that are poison put a major burden on the liver and so the liver's always going to try and get rid of poison from your body first but if that overload is just too fast for what your liver can actually handle then you start burning out really important nutrients like glutathione and acetylcysteine, uh, selenium, vitamin C, really important nutrients that help support detoxifying. And then when that happens, your liver's now sluggish. So instead of it working optimally, it's actually working really slowly and it actually can't get rid of those toxins fast enough from your body. So the toxins get stored in your fat tissues. And... Yeah, so these toxins putting a big burden on the liver and often cause the detox pathways to burn out anyway. Then you can have things like genetic mutations which affect detoxification. Um, You might have heard of something called MTHFR gene, which is actually surprisingly common. I think about a quarter of the population have this gene. And if you have this gene, doesn't always have to express, but given the right environment, such as being exposed to too many toxins, that gene mutation can switch on and then you can start having even more detox issues and also neurological issues. Okay. So that's your liver, detox, hormones, brain, also really important. So toxins, again, they get stuck in fat tissues. Now your brain is predominantly fat. 
it's a very fatty organ. And so when those toxins get stuck there, they can literally damage brain cells. So they're going to start burning out your neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, adrenaline. It can show up as mental health issues, inflammation, and also toxins really damage the mitochondria. So they're little organelles that live in your muscle tissue and they're converting food into energy. And so if these toxins are coming along and they're damaging the mitochondria, these little organ organelles start shriveling and then you actually struggle to convert food into energy because by the time the nutrients get to the mitochondria, you might only have 25, 50% of your mitochondria intact, which then means that you're not able to produce as much energy as what you could. I liken it to you're driving a four-cylinder car with only maybe one or two cylinders, not going to go very far. Okay. Yes. Were you going to say something? No. Like something about wonky willies again? (laughs) (laughs) You're going to have to put something in the show notes about this. (laughs) Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Don't listen while your kids are in the car. Okay. Oh, yeah, that too. No, nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, body systems. (laughs) I don't think, I think. Should we do do we want to keep this or are we starting again? What do you reckon, guys? We keep going. Let's just keep going. Okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. Leave <laughs> a comment down below if you are if you're enjoying Philly being uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Body systems. So best way to understand where they're at in terms of if toxins have affected them or what body systems are causing what symptoms. Uh, test not guess we love lab testing and we can identify what imbalances are happening inside the body we do actually have some spots open for a connect the dots experience or initial consult this is the first step in our ending body burnout method uh, but we've allocated some time if you just want to start with the first step and also I'm going to pop in the show note links the body systems assessment quiz which can identify based on this your mixture of symptoms what body system is more likely to be out of whack and out of balance clickety clack go do the quiz okay so um the the, why i got into this was so i had my first body burnout episode when i was i don't know what's that like almost 12 years ago now after my first baby Things got better after really tidying up and focusing on good nutrition. And then after Elsie, second baby came along, um, all the symptoms flared up again. And I remember this time just really developing quite a lot of chemical sensitivities. So I couldn't clean the bathroom without feeling nauseous and like my heart was pounding, very anxious. Even things like electromagnetic field so using electricity electrical devices um started causing issues in my body as well and i remember elsie was three months old and i got really nauseous and this kind of just like came out of nowhere and every day i was just so nauseous and i did a million pregnancy tests because i'm like no i can't be pregnant again no i'm struggling here with a three month old and a toddler and feeling crappy Um, They all came back negative. I went away on holiday for two weeks. The nausea completely disappeared. So then when I came back into our home, the nausea back on straight away as if I had morning sickness. And then I realized that I had this little fake candle scentsy type burner um, in my kitchen. And I had that going all the time because it smelled so lovely, but it was literally causing me nausea. So my body had developed a fight flight response basically to the the scent as a toxin poison and it was giving me some really clear pain signals that my body was not happy with that exposure and so that's where I started ditching toxins as well I'm like cool got my nutrition under order Um, let's clean out all the cupboards as well, skincare, hygiene products, cleaning products. As I finished one bottle off, instead of buying the same toxic product again, swat, 
swapped it over for good products. <laughs> And also got so into it that I started just making all my own products. And also we have our sister Incoming business. Incoming plug. <laughs> happy Biome. So I developed We'd like to thank our sponsors for this video. Well, actually, Happy Biome was a sponsor for the book, yes. So Happy Biome is our other business that has beautiful skincare cleaning products, organic, um, handmade if you're someone who doesn't have the time or you don't want to make your own stuff but you want reputable brands that you can buy from, Happy Buy Em is awesome. There's also heaps of other brands as well out there now. But you we're just, the best. <laughs> you just have to learn how to how to read the ingredients. Okay, so next looks, let's look at how to actually detox from toxins. And the first place to start is just cleaning out your house first. Before I move into that, if you're noticing that Chris isn't coming up with like random one-liners, <laughs> it's because he's actually gone. This is real life, guys. Um, we had a discussion that we were running over time with recording this podcast and one of us needed to take our daughter to the hairdresser. <laughs> and so rather than redoing this whole episode, I just said, you go, my love. You go, I have got this covered because all you're giving in this episode is like wonky willies anyway. So like goodbye. <laughs> all right. So you just got me. So profesh, aren't we? <laughs> all right. So, so how to detox from toxins. So first you want to swap out those natural products. And if you're someone who wants to continue buying products, then there are some really cool resources that I love using. And I talk about these, list these inside my book, Ending Body Burnout. And uh, some great websites, ewg.org is great. There's also an app called thinkdirtyapp.com. And also Chemical Maze is amazing. They have a book as well, an Additive Free Lifestyle. I actually had Joe and Tracy from Additive Free Lifestyle on the podcast last year. Awesome potty if you want to listen back to that. That um, podcast was more about additives in food and their app is more specifically about additives in food. But there's lots of handy websites, books, apps that you can now use to look at the ingredients on the skincare cleaning products that you're using or even like food. And then you can search them in these websites. All the apps are great because the apps, you can just scan the barcode of the product you want to buy and it's going to come up with all the ingredients in the product and if those ingredients are safe or not. Okay, and then if you're someone who loves DIYing, um, actually one of the resources, a free resource that you get when you buy my book, um, we have given away a whole heap of bonus resources that help people implement the things in ending body burnout and I did actually include their a DIY ebook if you want to create your own products using natural ingredients it's so quick and easy and actually really cheap uh, if you have more time so so I cleaned up my house and I'd been living low tox for a few years before I did my own lab testing. And when I did my own lab testing to look at my body systems, and the reason why I looked at these lab tests, or the reason why I started doing the lab testing is, even though I'd cleaned out the products from my home, I was still getting symptoms. They weren't as intense in terms of like the nausea disappeared as soon as I stopped burning the fake candle. But there were other symptoms that still weren't resolving. So I went in, did some lab testing to really look at what body systems were imbalanced causing my symptoms. And when I did the lab testing, I was shocked at how burnt out my liver was. Even though I'd cleaned up the toxins from my home, I'd also never drunk caffeine, alcohol, cigarettes, ever. Yet my liver was so burnt out. And so, so sometimes you can, you can clear toxins from your home, but your body systems still need some TLC to recover from years and years and years of toxic load. 
Mind you, when I talked about like, you know, I'd been living tox-free for a while, uh, wasn't ingesting uh, poisonous substances into my body. I did grow up on a flower farm. Uh, my dad had a flower farm and he used to use all of the pesticides, all of the Roundup, very dangerous chemicals back then. Didn't know much about it. And so I was probably exposed to quite a high amount of toxins through the farm that we lived right next door to. Okay, so testing, not guessing is really important for many reasons. So look, you could go and do your own detox for your, for your liver and it's often a place where people start. So they go and do a, few, a fruit, a juice fast or they will find some supplements from Dr. Google or like a Facebook forum and it's like do this and then do that and then do this and your liver is going to be all fine and dandy. My caution around detoxing without actually getting some lab testing and also working with a practitioner to help you through that is that it can actually make you more sick. If you're detoxing in the wrong way and by the wrong way, when we're working with people on their body systems, we will never, like I will never start with a detox protocol. It's very rare. I shouldn't say never. Occasionally I might, but it's very rare that we will start detoxing. Even if that part of the body is the biggest reason why someone is having symptoms. And the reason for that is it's really stressful to the system. So if someone's brain if someone's in adrenal fatigue or if your neurotransmitters are really depleted you're exhausted you're overwhelmed you're feeling anxious putting your body through an intense detox protocol can actually make you feel worse not better because your ability to be resilient with the detoxing as the toxins are getting pulled out of your fat tissues, you can end up with what's called a detox crash where your body's just not able to clear it from your system. So those toxins end up reabsorbing back into your system and it can make you feel worse. Also, I really like to make sure that people's guts are healed before we detox because if there's a lot happening in the gut, so that might be pathogens, leaky gut, um, gallbladder bile production isn't working very well, it can be quite unsafe and ineffective to try and detox if the gut is very blocked up and inflamed because when you're detoxing your liver is actually going to pull toxins from your fat tissues and then those toxins get stored in the gallbladder through the bile in the bile and then the bile squirts the toxins into your small intestines now if you've got SIBO or leaky gut or some other imbalance happening in the gut Instead of you being able to eliminate those toxins nice and freely through your bowels, those toxins actually end up getting reabsorbed back into your system, putting even more pressure on your liver. So when it comes to like detoxing from these toxins that might be stuck in your body, it is best to work with a practitioner. It's also best to test, not guess, because then you can actually identify other body systems that may need to be addressed first before you're detoxing. And also what I love about lab testing um, is that it can also look at what liver pathway needs support. So our liver actually works on three different pathways. Phase one is taking, is converting fat soluble toxins into water soluble toxins and it uses different types of nutrients to do that. Phase two breaks down those toxins ready for excretion and it, that one also uses different types of nutrients. And then phase three is how well is your lymphatic system working and are you clearing it out of your bowels or through your urea cycle, out through your kidneys and urine or are you clearing it out through your pores? So phase three is really all about how well you're actually eliminating those toxins. And so the lab test can actually identify where in those pathways um, do you need support It's very, so much more effective when you can do that and also way more safe. Okay, finally, I want to talk about fear because when you start learning about how toxic the world is, 
and how toxins are kind of like hidden everywhere, it can actually produce quite a lot of fear and anxiety for people. And I want to lean into that because I don't want you to end listening to this podcast and being like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die if I use the Vaseline and the parabens and I'm going to get so sick and oh, the world is so toxic. What can I do? I don't want you to leave this, this episode feeling like that. I want you to actually feel really empowered and in control. And so toxin fear is a thing and it's actually can become worse than the toxin the toxins themselves so I was there so when I I was there even before I started learning about toxins actually so I developed quite a lot of food fear as well where it's just like oh gluten's bad sugar's bad processed food is bad it's going to make me sick all those additives in food terrible bad 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 I'm going to get cancer I'm going to get so inflamed and so although I was eating really healthy it came from a lot of fear and a lot of force because I was too scared to eat off plan in case I would get sick or symptomatic. So there was lack of trust with my own body's resiliency that, and also lack of trust that I could choose to live in a way that was going to be supportive for my body anyway. So I already had that fear happening. And then when I found out about toxins and also the dramatic improvement when I stopped burning that scentsy candle, then all of a sudden that fear showed up again. So fear can create a lot of stress. So it's going to impact your adrenals, which are the Achilles heel to everything. If you're in a stressed fight flight response, it's really hard for any of your other body systems to heal or function properly. So detox pathways that are actually trying to clear the toxins are bumming out as well. Being fearful of toxins too creates a lot of paranoia and conspiracy theory-ness, um, which can be really stressful and definitely health anxiety. So people, I have worked with clients where they have so much paranoia, so much health anxiety around toxins and other harmful substances that their body, even before they enter a supermarket down the chemical aisle, their body is already to reacting to that. And so this is really interesting because although the toxins can show up as symptoms because it's affecting your body systems what actually happens over time when you're developing anxiety paranoia around the toxins too is that your brain is reacting to the toxins not because they're toxic but just because you're fearful and scared of them and so the brain is phenomenal it will look for more evidence of toxicity so it's experienced this little symptom where oh when I smelt that candle I got nauseous and I felt nauseous for a long time or for a you know a short period of time and then the brain will say oh okay so every time I smell something toxic that's how we respond in the body and that's where your brain your limbic system which is part you have the amygdala part of your brain which is always looking for danger. It's like it's the it's kind of like the monkey part of the brain where it's like are we are we safe? Are we safe? Where's the danger? Got to make sure that this person is safe. And when you get stuck in this health anxiety, toxin fear anxiety, then it develops this limbic system trauma loop where the brain is always looking for more evidence of toxicity. And even the smallest exposure will cause a reaction to your body, which is then where people are getting like a lot of sensitivities. And whereas the next person walking down the street, totally fine. And so in this case, brain retraining is needed. And this is a big part of what we do in our ending body burnout method. So yes, we're testing and treating body systems and educating, coaching people on how to create a healthy home, a healthy lifestyle. But a bulk, like a big bulk of our work is really rewiring our system so that it feels safe. So it feels safe to be in the world. And so that you create these beautiful identity beliefs about yourself that you are strong and resilient and healthy and whole and healing and healed because then that's going to switch off the limbic system trauma loop in the brain 
so that you can then go to the supermarket and walk down the cleaning aisle without having symptoms or walking past someone with perfume without having symptoms. Okay. A big part too of unconscious rewiring of deeper beliefs is the underlying fear about yourself. So if you lack trust with self, if you lack the trust that your body is strong and capable enough to detox, that it's resilient, that it's designed to clear toxins from the body, if you have deeper hidden unconscious core beliefs that you're somehow defective or broken or even unworthy or undeserving of being well, then these beliefs will really keep you stuck too. That'll keep that limbic system uh, part of the brain in a trauma loop because it's like, oh, it's not safe to be me. It's not safe to be in my body. And so when you can rewire that, then, oh my gosh, your health improvements just accelerate so fast. Okie dokie. Hopefully you've got some little nuggets from this. If you want to learn a bit more about um, going low tox, I definitely recommend checking out my book, Ending Body Burnout. If you're a client, um, shoot me an email and I'll send you some masterclasses that you can look at. Also, I mentioned the scorecard. So if you wanted to really understand where your body systems are at based on your symptomology, the body system scorecard is a great place to start. That will direct you to what type of lab testing might be best to look at. And also I'll pop in the link to our main ending body burnout assessment quiz as well. That looks at, it rates your symptoms, uh, your body, mind and environment. So from an environment point of view, which is what we've been talking a lot about today, you can have a look and see how you rate in terms of how healthy your environment is. All right. Oh, also too, about the book. Don't forget, next week I am running my book launch uh, event in Sydney. So our book tour is coming to Sydney. If you're a Sydneyan, I would love to have you there. It's on Monday the 18th. And yeah, it'd be awesome to have you there. Celebrate, learn the steps to end your body burnout, find your spark. It's going to be lots of fun. And Also, if you're someone who would really love a deep dive into what we've been talking about today and healing your whole self, not just sections of yourself, our Ending Body Burnout Method is opening in May, so not too long away. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Chris says goodbye as well. Thank you so much for listening. We so appreciate you. If you'd like to give us extra smiles, drop us a review and spread the love by sharing this episode. You can also rate your own state of burnout and the root cause contributors by taking our Ending Body Burnout Assessment on our website. And if you're interested in learning about our group or one-on-one Ending Body Burnout programs, shoot us a DM via Instagram or Facebook. Have Have the the best best day day ever. ever.